Sylvia and I decided to work on, a, on, a, on the following problem. And the problem was uh, how to play mental poker. Because there was one other paper that Manuel mentioned. And that was a paper by Shamir Vesna Alman, where they used their encryption scheme in order to show how to play mental poker. The idea is, again, we are two players. We um, don't have a physical deck. We want to play poker over the phone, over the computer line. And how are we going to do that? How are we going to deal cards in such a way that you're going to get a random hand, I'll get a random hand, and once we get the cards, they're not in the deck anymore without knowing what each other's decks are. So the problem we set out to solve was how are you going to play mental poker hiding all partial information about the cards? And uh, all of a sudden I had this idea about quadratic residues. I said, you know what? I was thinking to myself that the way to encode the zero and one the decision question would be that to decide whether a number is a quadratic residue or quadratic non-residue mod a composite number mod n. And this was a hard problem. I mean, Manuel told us this was a hard problem. Hard problem in the sense there were no efficient algorithms to solve it. And the reason why I thought it was a good idea is because um, it seemed to be a problem which is hard on the average. So it was. So in fact, you can not just tell whether something is a quadratic residue or non-residue, but you couldn't really do better than 50-50. Now one would have to prove that, right? But there was something about this problem, which is the notion that we then later on to define formally, uh, which is called random self-reducibility. So it was sort of a way that if you had one uh, number, if it was a quadratic residue, you can generate lots of quadratic residue. Or if it was a quadratic non-residue, you could generate lots of quadratic non-residues. And then that means that if you could sort of distinguish uh, one set from the other, even a little bit, uh, you'll be able to distinguish whether your original number was a quadratic residue or quadratic non-residue. God, excitement is just, you know, incredible. Because, you know, pretty quickly, you know, we could sort of come up with a proof. And uh, we, then, just to come back to the mental poker, the idea was if you could, th this would be a way to write down a card. So let's say the card is five, five of diamonds, okay? Then you would write, to, you write this down in binary, the five of diamonds, and now you want to, so that's in zero ones, and now you want to encrypt the zero, encrypt the one, encrypt the zero, encrypt the one, each time encoding it by this question, by a different quadratic or, or non-quadratic residue. Quadratic residue for zeros, let's say, non-residues for one, you choose them at random, and now you have an encoding of the card, which is what we would call later uh, probabilistic encryption or randomized encoding. And then we went to Dick Carp, I think, because Manuel was on leave in, in, uh, at MIT uh, for a semester, and we told him about this. And, um, and he asked us, uh, what about other partial information, not just whether it's zero or one? And um, in these questions professors ask you are incredibly significant, because you don't think this way, right? I mean, now we, it's an immediate question, but at the time it was a very fundamental question. And then we went away and uh, proved that if you could tell any partial information, so you had to define what partial information would be, so that would be some sort of function of, you know, the string, uh, any function of the string, better than 50-50, then you could actually reconstruct the individual bits of the card. The process was just, it was like, a, it was like being in some kind of a mad state of creativity. And, you know, working with Silvio was just a very intense experience. As anybody who's worked with him knows, any students, I mean, there's no day and no night. And uh, I think he's still that way. I'm not. But at the time, I was. Um, he was very intense. It was very exciting. You know, and of course, we didn't do it completely in isolation. There were these questions that, let's say, Carp asked us. And then it was, I think maybe it was him or maybe we understood already there was a way to encrypt here that it doesn't have to do with card games. There's a way to encrypt a zero and encrypt a one. That's something that was not known because the public encryption of, of uh, uh, reverse Shamir and Adelman, or even the Diffie-Hellman concept, it really was intended of encrypting, you know, long messages which are unknown. And here, zero and one, you know, you know that everybody knows either I'm encrypting a zero or one, but they can't tell which is which. So this was a completely new way to encrypt information. Um, so we understood this as much 